In this example, a shipping company charges $5 per pound to send a package. The company always rounds up to the next pound to calculate the cost. The maximum allowed weight is 10 pounds. Explain how the cost of mailing is a function of the weight of the package. What are the domain and range of the function? Graph the function. Okay, let's start out by talking about the domain and range. What are we dealing with in terms of the domain? Well, the domain is going to be the weight of the package that I sent. The smallest package I can send is going to weigh more than zero pounds. So the domain is going to be some amount of x, some number value for x that is more than zero. They're telling me though the maximum allowed weight is 10 pounds. So x is going to be less than or equal to 10. The range is going to be the cost of mailing. And the range is going to be different. The range is actually going to be discrete numbers because they're saying here that they always round up to the next pound to calculate the cost. So if I have a package that's two and a half pounds, they're going to round up to three and charge me $15. So I'm not going to come up with an amount like $5.32. It's just discrete numbers. The cheapest is going to be $5. And then I'm going to go to $10. $15, and that's going to go all the way up to my maximum, which is going to be charged for 10 pounds or $50. So the domain here is x value greater than 0 and less than or equal to 10, while the range or the cost is 5, 10, 15, 20, and on up to 50. Okay, so I got my domain and range. Now, explain how the cost of mailing is a function of the weight of the package. Well, the cost of mailing depends on the weight of the package. So if my x value is weight and my y is the cost, I have x as my independent variable and y is my dependent variable. And the cost of mailing is a function of or is dependent on the number of pounds, the weight. Okay, something interesting happens because of this rounding up and because of there just being discrete numbers in the range. Let's say I have a very light package. It's only 0.1 pounds. How much are they going to charge me? $5. Okay, let's say I have a one pound package. They're going to charge me $5. Fine, 1.2. Well, guess what? They're going to round that up and charge me $10. If I have two pounds, $10. If I have 2.3, they're going to round it up, $15. And on up, let's say I have 9.8, they're going to charge me, they're going to round up to 10, and they're going to charge me $50. Okay. So here's what I see is if I go over to my graph, and I say, okay, X is going to be one, two, three, four, let's just go up to five pounds for right now. And then Y is going to be $5 or 10, 15, 20, 25. Let's look at what happens. If I have a package that is anything over zero, maxing out at one pound, it's going to be $5. So that's going to be an open circle at $5 ending with a closed circle, uh, excuse me, an open circle at zero. So a little bit above zero all the way up to one pound, that's going to be $5. If I have half a pound on my X here, it's $5. If I have uh, two thirds of a pound, it's $5. Then when I get to slightly over one pound, so there's an open circle, they're charging me $10. If I have 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4, all the way up to two, $10. Okay, I get to three. As soon as it hits three, or excuse me, I get to slightly over two. As soon as it gets to slightly over two, they round up and charge me $15. Two and a half, etc., 2.9, $15. And then I get to three pounds, they charge me $15. As soon as it goes over that three pound mark, I'm being charged $20. And that ends at four pounds. So this is kind of an interesting graph because it is stepwise. Because there are multiple um, X's 
that are charged the same price. And this is still a function because each x value is only assigned one y value. 0.1 is assigned $5. 1 is assigned $5. So there's still only one y value assigned to each x. So this is still a function and it generates this stepwise graph. Okay. Today we had an introduction to functions and graphing, which is a concept we'll be using very frequently later on in the course. Thanks for visiting educator.com.